all your school rugby all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. The tail end then of the World Schools Festival, the fourth day here at Polrus Gymnasium on the Marcata field. It's been a wonderful tournament. We've got two more matches left. This is the second last one. Afrikaans Wurzien Skrull, Afrikaans High School, that is, in Pretoria. For those of you that don't speak Afrikaans in our worldwide audience, up against Christchurch Boys High from New Zealand. And a big game for both of these teams. Christchurch had lost their first match by a considerable margin against Grey College. And uh, that was the same score just about that they had the last year in the inaugural tournament that was held in Pau. Afis, well, a 36-12 win against the Italian All-Stars suggests that they were well ahead in that game, but they were made to fight. At one point in time, it was 12-all, and uh, they finished rather strongly as well, the Italians. They showed a lot of physicality, and maybe that's one of the things that's been missing from the overseas teams at times. Afis make nine changes to their team that played the other day, and nine changes doesn't mean that the other players didn't play well. It's giving everyone an opportunity, and of course, all the replacements that can have a run too. So Jaco Koch has got a good combination out there. They scored six tries in their last game, and Adolf Fisser, their number seven, was the man of the match and scored a hat-trick during that match. Christchurch, boys high. Well, they've made five changes in their team that lost to Grey College, and they're looking to beef up their forwards as much as possible because Afrikaans, Wurzien or Afis as we call them, no doubt will have a strong back of forwards. And that's got to be the important element for all of these teams to consider in fronting up to the opposition. But it all starts in the forwards. They're the replacements, the men that will have their opportunity of a run, no doubt, during the course of the game. We've seen that, and virtually all those Afis and Christchurch boys high replacements were starting men in the previous match. There's a bit of a breeze blowing directly down the field. And the, the man who's joining me here is a man who graced this field in uh, for a couple of years at Polrus Gymnasium. He and uh, his brother, two famous rugby players down in South Africa. And I think one of the great things for this uh, uh, particular tournament, the World Schools Festival, is that we've had in commentary or in, as a third voice some of the current players, guys who are injured at the moment. So Ramon Samuels, and just to put you in the picture, from Somerset West, He's a man that was at the school and currently plying his trade with Western Province and the Stormers. He previously, in Super Rugby, he previously played up north in Johannesburg for the Lions. And uh, he's a man who plays in the hooker position right now, but he's also very adept as a loose forward. Ramon Samuels. Ramon, you heard me chatting a little bit there about just what it, what's got to happen here. You've seen a, a couple of games in this tournament as well, and the pack of forwards of the opposition and the rest of the world teams have really got to front up to make them competitive in this game. Definitely. Good uh, afternoon to all our viewers all over the world, Gavin, and thank you for having me. Uh, definitely an Afrikaans in school is going to come up with a massive pack, massive phys physicality, and uh, it's going to be the, the task of Crisis Boys are to actually stand up and stop that momentum from going forward. I see... Um, what I've seen the trend throughout the day is whenever teams or South African teams get that momentum and go forward, our our counterparts from the rest of, of the world is struggling against that. So with the momentum, if you take away the momentum, you take away the time and the space and the, the tempo that we play with in South Africa at schoolboy level. So that's going to be a massive task for the crisis boys out today. Well, for Afis, the first thing is to front up to the hacker, which we're seeing right now.
Well, the haka is the challenge. It's the challenge that's thrown out to the opposition who respectfully stand and eyeball them. It's important that you actually look at the players as well. Ramon, as a 24-year-old, I'm sure you're looking forward to the day that will come for you to front up against the haka with uh, the guys wearing black shorts, black jerseys and black socks. Definitely, Gavin. And you know you want to, you know, you want to face the opposition and, and that opposition would be the All Blacks and, you know, play against the best of the best. And... Um, that's what Afi is coming in, uh, against. They're, going, they're coming up against future Crusaders, future Canterburyans, and uh, you want to measure yourself in your worth against this kind and against this kind of oppositions that uh, brings themselves to South Africa. And what a wonderful occasion that the World Schools events is is bringing. They're bringing a platform for our for our boys, the best of the best in South Africa, to play against the best of the rest. Absolutely, it is too. Yeah. So what will happen is that Christchurch will start off this game with uh, the wind at their backs. And is that going to be a factor for them as Oli Lewis gets things underway? Pretty good kick in that. Put a lot of pressure on uh, the Afis players. So uh, look at the claps all around from Christchurch. I think what we've seen today from the previous uh, uh, games that we've played is a lot of physicality from the international teams. The Italians this morning, uh, we've just seen now, even although they lost the match, the Southland guys from Invercargill, the same thing. I think we expect the same from Christchurch. Definitely, Gavin, and uh, what a what a uh, great opportunity to start early off 10 seconds into the match, you know, um, get that first scrum and get it over and done with, you know, win that mentality at the scrum time, you know, and get, the, get on the front foot. It's a great opportunity and a great attacking platform actually to play from. Yeah, you talk about mentality, you know all about it, standing in the middle of that scrum, the, the importance thereof. You know, us backline players tend to think that you guys are a bit crazy, but you look forward to this first scrum and, and the domination there. But that, that is how you measure your game too. Amongst other things, your job is not just there, of course. Yeah, no, definitely. I think uh, what we have in, and if, if I look at the, uh, what a great scrum by Afis and a great loose hit. Um, if I look at the, you know, at the at the body composition of the of our Christchurch men um, from New Zealand, um, I think they are overall great athletes. Um, we we are slightly built differently, and you know that will show, and you know it will show in your strength and your weaknesses when it comes to set piece time. So uh, I don't think that uh, the crisis boys is 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 way off, but you know Afrikaans here in school they certainly have a, a big advantage when it comes to weight. Yeah. Definitely, and I think we've seen that with all the teams too, so uh, that is a great advantage. I think that we've got as South Africans, generally speaking, South Africans are tailor-made for the game of rugby in many ways. And look at a guy like yourself too. I mean, you know, you're a big boy for, uh, not big boy for a hooker, but you're a, you're a big fella. Yeah. Um, and that's what we, we come to expect, you know, the, the current Springbok. Hooker Malcolm Marks is also, you know, he's built like you and big man that can help carry the ball. But your set pieces are, of course, the most important part of the game. What are your thoughts as well as a hooker on the difficulties that the a lot of the hookers here have had with their throw-ins, with the crosswind that we have at this field? Yeah, um, I've, I've watched a few of the games today, especially with the Italian games, the Italian and the Hilton game, and the previous one, the Great College one. I think um, your lobo would probably not be an option when the wind is blowing right straight across down the field um, so you would you would tend to go m much more for the bullet ball and you know or throwing just a little bit more quicker so you take off the spin of the ball and you just go for a little bit of pace which means also the guys on the ground have to react uh, a lot quicker and it'll be to the front as they attempted there on that occasion the uh men from Christchurch I thought there might have been a knock on there but it, there isn't one so the carry from Thomas Schmack Christchurch in a good position, yeah, but slow delivery from the breakdown point allows the Uffies players to get themselves organized defensively. That's Clayton Paranigi. Holly Lewis. Into the picture there, Fergus killed Patrick. And of course, these boys are, are carrying a great tradition as well from the Christchurch school. So many top rugby players that came from the school 46 all blacks over the years have been produced by the school including current ones like Brody Retallick and Anton Leonard Brown 
both the Franks brothers, but that was a high tackle there. So spot on and a good call. Now the question is, do they want to take three points or do they want to try and bridge that line if they can? I think um, they, will, they will certainly look for early domination and, you know, get the points on the board, put Office on the back foot. That would certainly be my plan if I was, you know, the crisis boys captain. Uh, you know, put Afis on the back foot, and it's going to be important for Crisis to start off on a high. You know, where they ended off in the previous game that I actually watched, um, I think it's going to be important for them and for their self confidence, you know, to actually play this game, enjoy it while still giving the, their best. Well, important throw in for them. The last one went awry. This time there's no competition in the line out. Perfect throw to the middle. Full back up in the line, Callum Simpson. And that scrum off, it's Max Hughes. They've got numbers, yeah, but uh, they've lost possession. And it's going to be a penalty, I think, for offside. So they come with numbers to Christchurch. Big, big battle for the line. Can somebody find their way over? They need a useful pod, yeah, with two or three guys helping the ball carrier. So that's number seven, who's been penalized. And I think he's going to get a yellow card. It's Adolf Fisser, the man of the match in the, the last game that he played. So a quick fall from glory. <laughs> yeah. And um, what I've known about the referee, Dylan November, is also from the Strand in the Somerset West Arena, uh, you know, area. And um, he's quite a, a strict referee and a strict guy. And, you know, uh, professional fouls in the likes of, you know, his mentor, Rasta Rasivenga, giving yellow cards. He doesn't sigh away from them. Um, and I think that's pro possibly the right call, you know, that it was a quick tap and um the in every two to ten meters could have been a possible seven points for crisis boys are absolutely and that's good to hear nice opportunity as well for dylan along with the some of the more seasoned referees here today uh, in this tournament we've had three international referees including amy barrett Turon, our top women's referee who's uh, so adept at the game now where's that ball is the question Someone's trying to force it over the line. They've done just that. And uh, a little knock on. So we'll come back for a scrum five. That's good defense that from the men from Pretoria <laughs> and the hooker. But you hookers are all the same. <laughs> Clayton Paranigi, he's, he's saying, hang on, but I, I scored there, didn't I? Yeah. What happened? But he, he didn't have control of that ball. There was no control uh, over that ball, as we could see up here, Gavin. Um, I think this is another great maybe a platform for the crisis to actually challenge uh, the seven men of, of office also um, you know these opportunities are hard to come by and they should actually use this uh, 10 minutes you know to get the upper hand and actually get points on the board absolutely right yeah 14 against 15 can make a difference if you can secure the ball so the naughty chair is uh, the home of Adolf Fisser for a couple more minutes Oh, this is their third line out again. It's to the front They've Managed to get it out. Not the best of deliveries. Here's Josh Jennings with the, the long pass to the left to Jake Wally Well, they haven't really progressed much it was just across the field that they went they thought about the kick Of course the game of the international teams interesting as well Ramon have all spoken about the pace of the game that we play it at at schools level in South Africa. And you can see just how quickly they go. He has a real chance. And he has a try then for Jake Wally. He's got his arm up before he went over. That's a big score that for the Christchurch boys. Certainly a big score for the Christchurch boys. I And uh, what a way to start the game. You know, they've been uh, building uh, pressure in the 22 meter of the office uh, half. And, um, you know, and it's difficult to play against uh, 15 men when you one down. Um, but that's well done. That's that you know that they spread that ball out wide and they've seen the opportunity and the space on, space on the outside. It's a beautiful play there too from Keegan McGregor, the number 13 who went in, just made sure he drew his man to give enough space there for Jake Waddy to flip over. Well, first score then to Christchurch Boys High School. And of course, remember they've got the wind at their back and if they use that effectively. We look forward to a good first half. Now, Ollie Lewis. Absolutely to a T then, as we say in South Africa, center Mrs. Fenter. <laughs> Seven points on the board. It's exactly what you said as well, 
remind that uh, 15 against 14, it is your opportunity. You know, you may have that extra man, and there the extra man was created. Definitely, Gavin, and it looks like the Crisis boys are, has been starting with a big tempo in the first nine minutes of the game, and it's actually refreshing to see because no other, you know, rest of the world team has actually taken that opportunity to bring the game to a South African team. I think so, yeah, particularly at the beginning of the game. You know, some of them have left their charges too late. This team, I think there's a, a lot that these youngsters have learned from their first games that they've played as well, you know. For many of them, it's a first visit to South Africa. They're never quite sure what to expect. Yeah. And uh, the power of uh, our South African packs of forwards and our big boys has been a real test for them. But I suppose that's part of the learning, too, for these teams coming here. And you're still young and uh, playing in another country against guys that you have not played against before really uh, provides you with, with some key learnings. Plus, off the field, you know, the opportunity to develop friendships. Yeah and enjoy the, the beauty of the, the Western Cape and Stellenbosch. No, definitely, Gavin, and especially in, on festivals like this. And we, in South Africa, we have the Easter Festival, so you build long-lasting friendships with other schools like Ray High and all those you know, Eastern Cape schools. But for these guys to come and build relationships internationally, and what a great platform, again, from World School Sports Events. You know, uh, this is just something that I wish and I dream that we had in our time. But these guys have that opportunity and that platform, and uh, I'm sure we will see many of these guys in the future also um, you know become future Springboks future Blue Bulls players and Crusaders yep well we'll uh, certainly keep an eye on the, on the names that we have on our score sheets oh, sleight of hand that's neat play that by the Christchurch boys running in their 22 course they've got a big wind at their back so a big hoof over the top can be effective too but at the moment they're happy to keep carrying it they've had to speed up their game to match the South Africans now, Oli Lewis kicked downfield, and uh, that's a pretty good kick. So that's got them out of a bit of trouble. Remind just to, to also for the, the many viewers that we've got worldwide, too, uh, the Stormers are playing overseas at the moment. You're not playing because of an injury. You want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so uh, we uh, did our preparation last year before the Curry Cup in France, and we played against Montpellier. And unfortunately, in that game, I tore my ACL and my LCL. Uh, completely off my in my knee, in my left knee and uh, it uh, asked me to be out of the game for the next nine months so I'm seven months into my rehabilitation so I have about two weeks to go and hopefully um, as things stand I will make my return to play on the same field that I got injured <laughs> against Montpellier <laughs> well, how uh, about that yeah so uh, how are you feeling I'm feeling great at the moment you know it's a it, it uh, my injury really changed myself as a person and as a rugby player you know just to enjoy and cherish the moments that you have in the jersey you, know, you only realize that you know that jersey means much more to a lot of people when you're not in that jersey so you know and to see the guys play and you know overseas they the guys on tour you know it's the best time of your life and uh, to, to actually and and all i'm you know all i'm i'm hungry for is just to be part of a team environment that's the biggest thing you know to build that memories because after all you know you never know when it's your last game and um after everything is done all you have left is memories yeah that's a very mature outlook that you've got there bearing in mind you know injuries are an occupational hazard they're part of the game everybody yeah. has them at some stage of their career and good that you have yours now and get rid of them Hopefully, none after that. So, some neat play there from Michael van Asviechen for Afis as they look to set a platform in the midfield. Can they make use of uh, the opportunities on both sides of this ruck? Well, they've got a penalty, and it's a mere tap over if they wanted three points. Somehow, I doubt that they'll do that. Will they take the scrummage? Midfield scrum can be really useful. No, nope, they're going to go for the line out. No. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Or is it? Well, that's been carried back and then eventually <laughs> kicked downfield. As far as the five meter. <laughs> well, you know that the kicker there will say to you that was a you know it was a cross kick for the the guy on the on the left side, but he was obviously trying to kick it out for the very fine angle. <laughs> so Afi's throw in Jacques Louis de Toy. Unchallenged, it goes to the middle of the line out. Now, are they going to rumble it up? No, they're going to bring it out to their backs. They've got some strong runners in their back line, too, in Gerard uh, Boerte and Johan de Toy. But surely 
going to be a penalty to Afis. Player not supporting his body weight. Dylan November says they went over the top. So it's a very quick take this and a chance of a try. George Oosthuizen, who played in last year's tournament at number eight for Afis. One of the key things in these positions is to always show patience. You don't always have it as a youngster. Everybody's dying to get over that line. Just hold on to possession, keep working up, try different options, and then off you go until somewhere the gap opens, and there it has. <laughs> Looks like Emir Janssen van Rensburg is the man who scored that try. And finally, Uffies are on the board. Virtually halfway through the first half. There was a great build up the um, you know a build up of pressure and you know Christ just felt the 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 grit of the office pack coming around the corner and uh, eventually you know conceding tri uh, penalties which uh, led to that try now at the moment but I think if if office can keep on you know building that pressure in the in the half of the crisis boys are I think crisis is just trying to do too much running out of the 22 with the winds behind the back just play the territory game I think Makota is big enough, you know, to get the balls in the corner, and, and that is ultimately that will um, help the course for them to relieve some pressure of themselves. I see you've learned quite a bit from your brother. Eh? <laughs> so just to let you international audience know, Damien Willemse is Ramon's brother, but Ramon is Samuel's because his mother was registered under her maiden name. I think that's correct. Yes, sir. Crawford with the kick. Now he's not going to get the distance. So Damien Willemse, for those of you that don't know him, look out for him. He's played for the Springboks already. He's a wonderful rugby player. One of the best steppers I've seen for a guy of his size. Also quite a tall boy. And he also played at the school. So fly half and hooker actually go down quite well together. You guys probably have a few fights as well, I would think, eh? <laughs> Got to no, be a few rumbles. No, definitely. <laughs> and especially when we were small little boys, we... We had a few rumbles together and, you know, playing, you know, in the yard, some rugby. Um, Damon is a very competitive guy and a guy that doesn't like to lose. So so my mother would end up, uh, you know, I would be the one that's wrong all the time. Because you were the bigger one. That's I was the bigger one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such a special moment to see these guys play on, on Makoto, you know. Um, this place is a special place for many of us. And... Um, the field is looking great, you know, great nick, and it's been a great week throughout. The, throughout, I've been I've been speaking to some of the tourists, some of the Southland uh, boys' moms and dads, and you know they've never ex uh, experienced such hospitality anywhere else in the world. And it's great that uh, we can come up with uh, this kind of brand, and I hope for many years that the World School Sports event will still be in South Africa. Be, may, it may not be in in. in Stellan Boss, but maybe in the southern suburbs where Bishops is also, you know, uh, a pristine location and also maybe in the Paul, which is the winelands of, of the Boerland and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a, I mean, this school, your, your alma mater, this school has got wonderful facilities, really, really. But, you know, if we go around the country, you'll find good facilities elsewhere, as you've mentioned. Next year, the tournament goes to Afis in Pretoria. And uh, the year after, well, I don't know. I've, I've heard some talk of Great College in Bloemfontein. So uh, these are the, well, the skip at the moment. We've just had a water break. So it's a minute wat water break in each half. And bearing in mind that these games are played 30 minutes running time with a five minute halftime break. So it's all action for the youngsters here. But, uh, I guess at the end of the day, if you're the age of 16, 17 or 18, as most of these boys are. Of course, in my year, we had sometimes used to have boys of the age of 19 or 20. I think. You youngsters today are a lot cleverer than we were. Eh? Made sure you got through every standard. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were academically, I mean. You was you were still playing in the weight in the weight area. <laughs> now straight to the back, Christchurch. That's good ball for them. Good attacking ball. They're standing flat too to get over that advantage line there. Callum Simpson, the ball carrier from the fullback position. What's the fullback with a wind at your back? You can stand in the line. Spend more time there, find the opportunities. Holly Hansen brought down Christchurch in a very good attacking position now. They've got one try in this game, courtesy of Jake Wally. And I think they've realized too that one of the important elements against South African teams is to get over that advantage line. Now the cross kick and a wind like this, up for it. Oh, oh dear, it's been dropped. Carl Liebenberg, but uh, it doesn't really matter because they're going to come back for the penalty. And that penalty 
again in a very kickable position tight game this very tight game um i would definitely add on the pressure and then either way <laughs> i would th i think i would i would take you know the scrum and you know you have the ascendancy with that um, yellow card still off of the field Oh, look at that penalty count already nine penalties in the game so both teams guilty of uh, giving away the potential of points but they're always going to the line out here now it's just a question i suppose generally speaking you know in a windy day and you feel that you've got a strong enough scrum but they back their line out and uh, they got an initial set there which was maybe a bit fragmented yeah. but they've gone forward well yeah now this is what i've seen quite often is an individual going on his own and have two guys on your shoulder to help give you the momentum going forward and ultimately when you go alone which means like guys have to react to you to your to your thinking and you know you lose numbers actually um, and now um, where they could have had the advantage you know that numbers is lost now so you, they have to start over now um, and start from the beginning but to come back to when uh, when you spoke about the set piece and the line out in the wind factor uh, it was a great set but you know the supporting uh, lifters of the crisis boys i just wasn't set to good but what a great try and it was well worked around the fringes for a few phases now you've called your first try in rugby in a broadcasting sense <laughs> <laughs> wonderful there it is yeah so another good one there from christchurch they really are making a good meal of this game three attempts there good patience from them but they slowly got the recipe right of what you were talking about a couple of men to help carry the ball carrier over the line or onto the line virtually we could say kevin i don't know about you but i'm just seeing a totally different crisis boys are here a team that is playing with a, a up tempo a team that's playing with a, a revigorated uh, physicality presence at the moment and you know it i can see it the guys in the package leading it and the back line is just uh, distributing from uh, what they get the momentum and the front football definitely a different side to what we saw in the second day Bearing in mind these players they have to play two matches in the week with roughly a, a break of 48 hours between games. Quite a big physical test. This is Ollie Lewis. Converted the last one. Done quite the same with this one. So Longworthy was the man who scored that try. I was just trying to pick up who the person was. There were a pile of them that went over. Now that uh, kick has just gone the 10 meters. No, the referee says it hasn't. So they'll come back to the halfway line. Not a good start that by Uffies. Are we going to see a game of two halves here? Would be a question as well because the wind really has picked up. And Uffies have got uh, the reliable boot of Nico Mullo, who hasn't really been influential in the game yet at fly half for Uffies. And he also hasn't had a lot of possession. I think the the office coach will probably have a few hard words with the guys at halftime and you know tell them to get back to the basics get back to that physicality presence coming around the corner you know playing that typical game that we know the Afrikaans will they can play um, and then it's going to be um, the responsibility of the the, f the fly off so being um, to get them and uh, use the wind behind the backs I think definitely it will be a, a game of two halves as you said it um, Christ is not use utilizing the wind as much but hopefully Afis can see that as an opportunity for themselves to get back into the game. Funnily enough, most teams have not really utilized the wind when it's been available to them. You know, and we know what it's like at schoolboy level. We like to carry the ball. We all like to run around with it. But create that balance in your game. And, of course, we've heard a lot from the benches as well and the coaches, a lot of talk, you know, a lot of instruction that's being given out there. And I suppose, you know, it does depend on your game plan. I've just always believed that you must play with the elements. Yep. not against them you yep. know if the elements can help you then make use of it if you've got a, someone with a big boot that can drive them down into the corners and you could put pressure on them there max Hughes, the scrum half today for christchurch boys high school i think might be quite happy with the way his pack has stood up until now they're lighter than the uffies pack but generally they've they've been fine so quick pass from him fly half ollie lewis also just uh, testing the defensive qualities of this Uffy side. Good quick delivery as well from the base. It's, I must say I'm very impressed with Max Hughes. 
Yeah, it looks to he look, it looks to be a nippy kind of um, scrum off, taking his chances, getting back up on his feet. You know, when he's been caught up, trying a little, you know, trying all these little bit of stuff that you know ultimately is going to give Crisis boys the the go forward. But he's just one. He's just one. His team a line out and an attacking line out being added. See a bit of Aaron Smith in him. Got his socks down to pull him up, man. Pull him up. <laughs> There we go, down the middle, Callum Simpson. Well done, Callum Simpson. This is the area where they need quick delivery, and they've got it from the breakdown. Now Lewis on to Paranigi. A couple of extra men there, but quickly fanning out of the Uffies men. And we've seen that Christchurch boys have, when they've got down into an attacking position, generally they've made the most of it. Got those two tries at the moment, and they've also won a penalty. Just must be a little bit of a worry for Uffies. They're starting to give away penalties in the red zone, which is putting the pressure on them as well. Yeah. Like I said earlier, you know, and they're taking the three points at the moment. So, um, like I said earlier, the crisis is looking to uh, pin them back here in this 22, building pressure. And with this pressure, we've seen, you mentioned it earlier, there's been already been the penalty count. has already been at nine. So, you know, it's it's a consistent rising on the side of office so it's either it's it's gonna play against them um, and they will have to rectify it very quickly so 14 points to five it is at the moment 17 to five beckoning if this kick can go over looks like uh, Josh Jennings is going to be taking it and uh, Ollie Lewis up to now has been uh, the kicker he's got a smack in the mouth so so Josh Jennings has to take the kick in the absence of Ollie Lewis maybe he's a competent enough goal kicker because this is a very important time for them to stretch that lead Whacked it through, no problem at all. So Jennings with the penalty goal to go with the two tries that they've scored. And perhaps the result, or not the result, but the score at the moment might be a little bit of a surprise. Have a look at this possession, 60% to Churchill Boys High School in this first half. So they've had a surfeit of possession, which has enabled them to score those two tries. Christchurch Boys High, of course, not Churchill. Churchill Boys High School is in Harare in Zimbabwe. And I think I made the same mistake last year. Talking about Churchill, it's Christchurch, of course. And Gavin, just on the position, we've seen this morning also, <laughs> even in the Super Rugby, with the Stormers playing with high position rates, uh, percentages, and also territory, uh, high, high position territory. But ultimately, if you can't keep that, you know, the lead and keep on... Uh, making the scoreboard ticket, it actually counts for nothing. So it's going to be the it's going to be the, the responsibility of these crisis boys, I uh, boys, to keep on that uh, that uh, scoreboard ticking at the end of the day. Yeah, that, it's a very true point that as well because we've seen during the course of this tournament, and in fact, one of the games this morning, we saw the opposition actually had something like 60% both possession and territory, and they lost the game by 40 points. So as you quite rightly say, it, it is what you make of it. You know, the possession you've got, how can you transfer that well into points or pressure on the opposition? Definitely. And um, I'm going to go back to the Stormers this morning. Like 60th minute, 10-9, in score, 24-9. You're leading in possession, you're leading in territory, but you can't do anything with those. So... Uh, I think the the back line, the the forward back of the of the of the crisis boys are is putting on a massive platform to to man up against this African C N school uh, pack, um, and it's going to be the the responsibility of these backs ultimately of the crisis boys are to get them and to get the finishing in order, you know, to keep on building on that. And what a win this would be for them. I know it's only the first half and there's four minutes left, um, but this this is actually a great start for them. I didn't think they would come up out like this today but you know the tempo and the way they are playing is speaking for themselves yeah it's a wonderful sight that uh, to see a competitive 
international school, especially a New Zealand school, and yet another penalty against Uffies. They must be so frustrated with uh, the way things have gone. But you've got to say, you know, a game of rugby in this case is 60 minutes, 30 minutes each way. It's what happens. Not a game isn't one after 30 minutes. It's one after 60. Yeah. There's things they can do to correct this, and they mustn't get frustrated. They've just got to go back to the basics, the things that they do well, try and get their hands on more ball. But it's wonderful to see the competitive spirit of this Christchurch team. Definitely, and you can see the you, you can see the tight head losing his bind there, and the loose head just walking around. Um, uh, across the, the, the scrum of the Crisis boys are so rightfully in Dallas November awarding that penalty to the Crisis boys. In Christchurch also the school was the the home of uh, Sir Graham Henry and the ex New Zealand coach and the current New Zealand coach Steve Hansen, which outlines perhaps you know Jake White who was a Springbok coach too. A lot of the Sir Graham Henry and many others. Many school teachers end up as uh, as very very good coaches, and I suppose the bottom line is that they know how to work with people, yeah. understand uh, the oohs and ahs of uh, of the young men, and uh, have all shown a great level of success during their career. Also, taking nothing away from you know professional sports people that turn into coaches and professional coaches, but you know there's just this thing of um, you know school teachers that you know they have that you know that mentality of knowing how to work with you know with the boys and stuff like that i've also personally loved that uh loved the idea of if you have great people skills you become a great you you become a great coach because you can get your message that you're trying to you're trying to get across to the guys or the players or whoever you get it a ac across much quicker and much clearer where you know you don't want to be bumping heads with coaches and uh, have differences with them okay so if you've got good man management skills think about coaching you might have to do that later in your career as well, my boy. Good man management skills. Good interpersonal skills. When you're serious, eh? I think I would love to be the first in coach of bishops. <laughs> You've got to be a powerless. You can't <laughs> leave your school behind. Kick coming there from Max Hughes. It's a big hanging kick and a very good one. Was that touched by uh, the replacement, Jack uh, Skips? No. So... Uh, see they just the effect that the wind can have too so yeah it was touched by him so Dylan November as with many of the referees during this tournament has made liberal use of the advantage law and it's so good to see it just keeps the continuity going we had s close on 700 points in the first two days of this tournament so I'll tell you what the spectators have had plenty of action So we're just about on half time. A couple of seconds more. Michael van Asvechen with this put in. Huffies would love to finish this half with uh, a couple of points. Can they get it? Pick up by George Wurstazen. Both teams have desperately tried to make sure they guard their try line. Is there a way through here somehow? Well, they also want to carry the ball through some phases. Just to set up the opposition. Wistazen is always a handful from the number eight position. Van Asvirchen. So Wendell, Ruben Wendell also taking the first man out. And they've kept it quite tight as well, Uffies. They haven't really used the width of their field. So Bjorn van Weyck and Carl Levenberg on the wings haven't seen the ball in this first half. No, they might get an opportunity now. This time it's Adolf Fisser, who's a real handful physically, a great athlete. And eventually out they go. So surely that is going to be half time. Yep. It's called by Dylan November. And uh, the half time scoreline shows Christchurch Boys High in the lead. There'll be a lot of people that will be very happy from that point of view. Not so much the Uffies players, but that's, a, that's the challenge that's been given to them. And they have a rare opportunity now of regrouping with their coaching staff and working out their tactics for the second half. Half time here at Polaris Gymnasium, Uffies 5, Christchurch Boys High 17. So some of the action from uh, that first half. And it started with a cracking try to uh, Jake Wally. 
could see the elation there on the left winger's face as he went flying through. The points were quite rare for a long time in this game. And Offies wanted to show that uh, they also have the metal that's required to get over the line. There was some good interplay, a great team try ultimately, some hard work by the forwards and the try from Forensburg. But the Christchurch boys were not to be outdone. They spent a little bit of time on the line and then they worked their way up slowly but surely. Good patience shown by them before Longworthy managed to stab that ball onto the line. Both tries converted for Christchurch as long with a, a penalty goal from Josh Jennings and a very unified effort. Well, if you look at the match statistics, they will tell you that uh, things are pretty even. If you have a look overall, both teams have conceded more penalties than they would have liked. But for the rest of the statistics, it's pretty, pretty close. As expected, possession and territory, perhaps in the first half of the wind at their back, belong to Christchurch, but not by a big margin. And the lineouts and the scrums on both sides, pretty fair. Christchurch will be worried about five tackles they missed because they might have to make a lot more in the second half playing into the wind. Definitely, Gavin, and we've seen that position in the third district come down considerably in the last 10 minutes of the first half. Um, I think Christchurch boy, boys are would, would want to, you know, tighten up on their defences, and uh, I think the coaches of Office would, would, they would need to get their fly-offs and their generals actually to get going and get them playing in the right areas of the, of the, of the field. So those would be your tactics going into the second half. Well, maybe that's also being discussed in that huddle there, that guys, we are into the wind, but bear in mind, it's easier to carry the ball into the wind too. Yeah. The par, your passes don't float away, so let's be confident about the way we do it. However, maybe what we've got to do is we've got to make sure we keep fronting up, up front yeah, to definitely. the Afi's pack of forwards. Well, Jako Koch will have a message to his men. He knows the qualities they've got. This is a good rugby team. It's a very good team. They were number five in South Africa last year, five or six, depending on which which uh, thing you you decided to go with. There are many, many, many different ways of determining the top schools in South Africa, but they are certainly in the top 10, of course. And there's so much similarity between these two schools. You know, they're 1,300 learners, as we call them in South Africa, pupils in the rest of the world at uh, the Uffy School, uh, 1,400 at Christchurch Boys High School which is a, a feeder to the University of Canterbury. And of course, Office is very much a feeder to University of Tux. The University of Pretoria, which yeah, is called is Tuckies. We call it Tuckies. And they, in fact, wear the same colors or very similar colors to uh, what the Office boys wear. So do we have a game of two halves? Time will tell. We've got 30 minutes left of this game. The penultimate match of the World Schools Festival down here in Stellenbosch in the Western Cape of South Africa. And if you just don't know your geography that well, you can certainly you can Google it. But also to tell you that we are at the roughly at the end of summer in South Africa. However, it is still fairly warm. Mid teens, uh, mid twenties, of course, of in degrees centigrade as we work with in South Africa. That's a great kick in. Up for it there was uh, Jamie Hanna. The first knock on came from the Christchurch boys. It was a double knock. So now the chance for Uffies. They're into the Christchurch boys high school half. They've got to be saying to each other, guys, this is where we stay. This is where we want to be. This is where we want to play. Can they do that? And then and it starts and it starts with, defense. Yeah, and it starts with the ascendancy uh, at scrum time for the for office. So if they can get the ascendancy, not walk around, because you know Dylan Wimble would probably uh, penalise them. But it's great scrum platform that is set, and they're going uh, wide immediately. Well, it's I'm sure that Carl Liebenberg on the right wing and uh, Jorn van Vijk on the left wing will enjoy the opportunity of maybe getting their hands on some ball. But in the meanwhile, it's the athlete. The big athlete there in uh, Renat Lud Ludwig. Lovely running that by a lock forward. And if you get really a good work rate from your tight five, it does open up a lot of doors for you. Lewis, uh, rather, uh, Nico Stein. And a little bit of space. An early 
score here for Uffies would do them the world of good. Their confidence and everything else that goes with it. They've got numbers now, but it's Jacques Louis de Toy going forward. As we mentioned, this could be big tackle time for Christchurch in this half. It'll be interesting to see the number of tackles that are going to be made during the course of this half. We can maybe keep a tab on that. But in the meanwhile, it is the Uffies boys flying at the line. There's a penalty for them from almost slap in front. Ramon, you're the captain of the side. What's your call here? I think it's, you know, it's early in the second half. I would take the points, take the points that is offered. You put uh, crisis under pressure, um, you know, you get the ball back from the restart and, you know, you know, you make sure that you get a clean exit. But it, as at look of things, you know, they're going for the foot, they're going at it and they're building up great pressure now at the moment. Jacques-Louis de Toy, the hooker, he wasn't going to kick a goal, that's for certain. <laughs> He's got it at the moment. Can they get it down? Well, the question is, where is that ball? If it's off the ground, what? If the referee blows his whistle, no, it's fact it's been turned over. Oh, oh. charge down. Now you can play that ball from any position. So there was they very lucky to have got away with that Christchurch Boys High School. But they did really well to turn that position over. And there's another turnover, I think, now. No, no. Off their feet there, the Afis boys are blown up by Dylan November. Now, this has got to be the worst penalty in the world to take. A right footer, right against the touchline, into the teeth of the wind. I think he, he has to go for the banana kick. If I've learned something from my brother, <laughs> the banana kick would yeah. be a great option at this moment. Quite right. Well, I think importantly is to make sure he gets it out because their lineouts have been reasonable. Yeah, they've only lost one till till, till now, and um, they had seven out of seven out of the eight lineouts they've uh, they've won in the first half. You've been counting them. Well done. Clayton Paranigi. His target is the, the back of the line out. That's a great ball for them to, to really attack the advantage line. They've done really well with that. Nobody in close in support there for Josh Jennings, but they also have now got it away again, Ollie Lewis. And uh, out onto the left wing to Jake Wally. Maybe was a little bit too quick to put the boot to ball. Kick coming there from Dieter Crawford. And, uh, well, not his best kick of the day, but nevertheless, it's out into touch. So a lot of pressure put on Uffies there. And I think that's one of the things as well, Ramon, that Christchurch have tried to do is, is to actually try and make sure they're on the front foot up front, really with a, a lot of pressure, and then to run it. And they really have worked the ball around. Yeah, certainly, Gavin. And I don't think um, the Christchurch boys would mind this at all. You know, it's great territory position that they get. And they might have, Uffies might have kicked the ball out, but they had it, it, um, there was no advantage for them for the knock-on that was in the tackle so this is actually a great a defensive scrum for Christ's boys I had to build on that um, and also uh, the most important thing would be for um, office to get a clean exit here we've, oh. we've seen in the tackles miss now um, so Christ's boys I would have to you know have to work on that um, it's gonna count against them if they if uh, office keep on with that momentum um, in the second half it, yeah. And it's that was six missed tackles to one of the office. Yeah, that's not uh, that's not a good statistic. James Hanner off the field and Josh Taula has taken his place in the lock position. Well, well there, there's one way of making sure that you get ready for the next scrum. Beating of chests. Jakobus Blachnet in the picture there. There's the man walking along there. He was also part of last year's tournament. Michael van Asvierchen with the feed. He's had a steady scrum during the course of today. It was very well regathered. Oh, the kick coming from Dieter Crawford. It's a, a better kick. It's not out though. If that was his intention. His opposite number now, Callum Simpson, also with a kick downfield, trying to find some space. 
Now, when you've had very few opportunities to have the ball in your hand, you want to take every one, and that certainly is the case with Bjorn van Veik. His first real touch in the match and for opportunity to run at the opposition. Christian Comfort takes it in. And then Jacques-Louis de Toy. Well, maybe he'll be relieved by the penalty. Well, the referee's arm up. Definitely. Not, not a good catch. Definitely. And what a great counter-attacking move there by uh, the winger of the Afri Afrikaans, Wurzian School. And, um, you know, as soon as they got back into the 22 and pin uh, Christ's boys eye down, uh, you, we saw the forwards coming around. Uh, yeah, what a great run. You know, he's the evading, seeing the space, utilizing the space, you know, and then setting it up back in the 22 of the Christ's boys eye. And then after this, great... Uh, uh, Great appreciation of his of, of the laws there, also. But yep. here we go with the line out and the, the rolling ball of the the African CN score. Ah, oh, that's a brilliant, brilliant effort from them. They had to get over there. Jacques Louis de Troy getting the try, and slowly the Afi's machine is starting to show that it's better oiled in the second half. There's another example of just how well they were unified in that drive the whole pack of forwards together making sure that uh, nobody could stop them definitely and uh, you know it was a much more solid build of the base of the of the more whereas when we saw in the first half of crisis boys I the supporting players was taken out a lot earlier and quicker easily so you know it's all about the base and how you're building your more um, and african cn school just bought himself five points on the board So Dieter Crawford has got a very difficult conversion yet. Given it a good smack, but it's going to go past the right hand upright. But still, seven points adrift at the moment. Can they claw their way back in? We spoke about the possibility of uh, a game of two halves, and it's unfolding as such at the moment. That was a very heartening drive, that by the forwards. There's the try scorer. Jacques-Louis de Tour always said that, you know, if you've got a hooker that can take your team forward, it's someone in the best position. Coming off the field, Oli Hansen. He's been replaced by Ben Hassel. Well, it seemed like an, an initial knock-on, but he has the try scorer again, and now the forwards are very much part of the mix. Yes, Christian Kampfer. Excellent play, this oh. interception. Now, who's got the pace to chase this man? Can they catch him? He's going really quickly. He's keeping an eye on his man. That's brilliant play from Callum Simpson. He was at all times looking to see where the men behind him, two of them probably quicker than him. He just kept swerving and moving in a different direction. Wonderful finish. Excellent play then from Simpson to get the third try of uh, the Christchurch Boys High campaign. And a very important uh, conversion here for Oli Lewis as well to try and secure the seven-pointer. Tell you what, this does open the game, doesn't it? It does, certainly. And, you know, we thought Office had the ascendancy breakthrough. Um, and penetrated the crisis boys eye defense from the kickoff, you know, um, and then just like that in a split second, seven pointer against you, against you. Should have no trouble with a two pointer here, Oli Lewis. And ha suddenly that lead is now out to 12 points. When people do their, their sums, they'll realize that uh, they've got to score two tries and convert one of them to do the old catch up. In fact, convert both of them. There was the interception, and that was disappointing because Uffies were just starting to get their wheels in motion, weren't they? Definitely, and they were, they were starting to play in the right in the right areas of the field, trying to get the. Well, that's now gone 10 meters. Knocked on by Jacques Louis de Toy. Jacques Louis de Toy has really come alive in the second half. 
He's been carrying the ball greatly. You know, he's making mistakes, but it, it shows us that he's keen and he wants to take, he wants to, you know, he wants to be the fire in the team, getting the pack reignited and getting started, you know, to begin that comeback for the Afrikaans um, Orsian squad. Well, you know, I mentioned up front, of course, that you've played as a loose forward as well as a, a hooker in rugby. If you had to make a choice of them, which one would you prefer to play? And don't tell me you want to play Flav, because your brother's already in that position, or fullback. Uh, Gavin, I would certainly pick Hooker. Um, you know, I've grown to love the position. Um, when, you know, when Hans Krubov is a rugby, Rudolf Strauli, the CEO of the Lions, and Russell Winter, which is my forward coach at the Stormers at the moment, when they came to me and said, listen, you know, the possibility of you becoming a springbok at the end of the day um, at the hooking position um, is, is looking great for the future all I had to do was work on it I had no one to tell me how to you know how to play hooker or didn't have specialized coaching and stuff like that I, I, I've learned all by trial and error by playing making mistakes and bearing myself at it um, and today I'm not for one single moment um, uh, disappointed in the fact that I chose hooker above loose forward because at the end of the day if, if I had to be a loose forward I had to compete against the Sia Kulisis, Peter Steve, the Twitch of this world and in that, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be able to compete against them, but I'm just glad that I'm on the journey of the hooker and learning from the best that I... You know, I, when I was at the Lions, I played with Malcolm Marks and I've learned from him, you know, and I've worked with guys like um, uh, John McFarland also that helped uh, uh, um, Malcolm also at this time when he started off playing hooker with his throwing and stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, the guy that made a big difference in my career was Russell Winter uh, and showing the confidence that he had in me, you know, and also what he saw... What he sees in me and where he sees me going uh, in my in the future of my rugby career where did you play at school at, at school i played i, I played eightman and uh, no. open side flank Only loose forward, eh? i played uh, craven week both years i played uh, loose forward as well as ac schools and ac under 20 i played loose forward now that question often gets asked of individuals who end up in certain positions you know one of the the guys that played in my era was the springbok captain Mornet who see was at great college he played fullback at school and then he ended up playing in the number eight position for his country. Yeah. <laughs> but again, I think if you have a look at athletes today as well, and we see it with these men out there, we've got some great athletes. You look at the tight forwards running like backs, able to handle like backs too with good skill sets. Oh dear, that looks like Bjorn van Veik there who's taken a smack on the knee. Oh dear. That's, he's, that's not comfortable at all. Well, that's very sad. You know, we, we, we've seen a couple of injuries. Luckily, not too many massively serious injuries during the course of this tournament, which you would expect to happen as well. But I must say that the medical staff here have been excellent. And these people, you know, are unsung heroes. They've been around, they've looked after, you know, all the facilities are here to take care of individuals who do maybe have some challenges. And I think Bjorn van Veik, the doctors know what they're doing, but yeah, he is definitely taking a massive knock on his leg. And then we're not medical doctors, we're not going to definitely be uh, and speculating. Yeah, and definitely, and um, what, a, what a great platform we have here for World Schools events because we, at this uh, exact field, we have a medical clinic, you know, that's run by a medic clinic. Um, hospital just underneath the stadium of the grandstand so he, he'll be looked after he will be looked after and they'll you know they will assess him and hopefully it isn't too bad at the end of the day while well, he's getting up so that's a great sight that's a great sight he wants to walk off the field oh, what yep. a man oh well you know all about injuries you know the, your injury too that set you back for the last seven months with another two to go and uh, Bjorn van Veik, well, it's right at the beginning of the rugby season, so one hopes it's not serious and he has an opportunity. Your school career is so limited because when you finish matric, you finish school, essentially. So you want to enjoy the time when you're at school. And I still think school's rugby is probably almost the nicest time of your life, isn't it? De definitely, uh, Gavin. I spoke to uh, one of my high school teachers that actually coached me in under 14 eh? He's coaching the first team now of Paul Ridge Gymnasium, and uh, uh, I spoke to Mr. Marina, Mr. Marinas Pretorius, and you know I told I told him like I'm so glad that I was in the fortunate position to make memories and to enjoy my time at at high school because um, when you're out of school and 
and and you're gone and you're away from the stuff all you have at the end of the day is the memories that you have that you've gathered up with your teammates and stuff like that so while you're in the school even if you don't enjoy it you need to make the most of your time of, of it you know when you're in a negative space and stuff like that you need to snap out of it as quick as possible because your well-being uh, is being determined like that at the end of the day you know there's a lot of guys here um that is here for the you know the experience and 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 that is good and for them most importantly other you know you like the crisis boys are they mustn't look to they mustn't look into the lose the loss all all the losses um that much but the memories they're building you know they're in a they're in a, they're in a different country and they uh they experiencing different kind of opposition yeah it's experience but it's also the learnings that's important too as a young person you want to learn from from your experiences or from other people too that uh, people that have the wisdom to be able to share with you what uh, you're doing well what you're doing wrong maybe you that's where the coaching staff become so important but a really good effort here from Jamie Hanna who's back on the field as well the Christchurch boys high school Ooh. Looking, uh, confident well who but to make that tackle then Jacques Louis de Toya really has been a driving force for our kid uppies well that pass almost looked forward but now the little chip kick downfield which way does it bounce can it bounce favorably it doesn't for the uppies boys but it's been knocked on so it's a scrum advantage uppies now realize they've really got to put their backs now to the wall and they've got to make sure that they get some points on the board they're trailing by 14 points at the moment and a converted try now would really help their cause. George Westhuizen uh, has also been a tower of strength in carrying the ball. Now, the big Werner Krier. They are so close. Somebody surely must get over. Yep. It's Michael van Aswegen. So right on the try line they were and then the scrum off the little dummy sees a small gap and manages to slide through good body position too it's very difficult to tackle a man when he's down just above ground level Dieter Crawford with the conversion and they back in the game are the Uffies boys just one score away they are at the moment if I've done now I haven't yes I have done my sums correctly no, I haven't. Nine points to drift. So they're still going to score twice. Nevertheless, they'll be heartened by that. So they're starting to get some rhythm now. A little bit more ball and a few more gaps. Are the Christchurch boys tiring would be a question that I'd want to ask. Into the wind, really trying to hold their own. I certainly think there's a factor of tire. You know, they, they, they're busy tiring up because uh, Afi is usually utilizing the the forwards, you know, to run at them, uh, making them uh, pick, uh, tackle more, um, and um, oh, he just he just ran without the left it there. behind. He left it behind. Uh, yeah, doesn't matter because they'll come along there. Now Christchurch boys high, you can have a look there. 63 tackles they've made. Afi's 42, but also the Christchurch boys have missed a lot of tackles. Mm. So you have a look at those 63 they've missed eight tackles and that can be really crucial in a game too you know what's crucial there gavin um, office is just missing touch there there would have been a great platform for them to start attacking from again you know and get back into the game seeing that there are nine points behind to, to just get that momentum rolling over because crisis boys eyes is against the cost at the moment yeah definitely the christchurch know as well in a situation like this you want to hold on to the ball make their opposition make the tackles keep keep at them as much as you can but this is a a far removed Christchurch boys high school from the one we saw on the second day definitely a revitalized re-energized and a, a team that that you know made made plans in the week uh, in the 48 hours that they had eventually and well yeah comes a try surely can they get it done yep Paul Liebenberg with the score so very quickly they've scored two tries
just suddenly there's been a fire that has been ignited in the bellies and the feet of these men from Afrikaans Wersi and Squirrel. And they've used the width of the field beautifully. That was a super pass there as well from Gerard Boerter. And eventually, Karl Ebenberg managing to get over. Bear in mind as well that the left wing, Bjorn van Weyck, has had to leave the field. This is the right winger from the left wing position. Ball tucked under the right arm and getting a five-pointer. Boy, this is a difficult kick. Dieter Crawford giving it a good smack. What a kick that is. He's got it over just when his team really wanted it as well. So have a look at it. It's a 24-24 all 24 all ball game. You you asked for a game of two halves, you got it going. It definitely has become like that. And now I suppose it's really important to keep an eye on your replacements. Make sure you've got fresh legs on the field. But it's all about defense for Christchurch right now. And we've got nine minutes left of this game. Which way is it going to go, if any way? I feel fairly comfortable that we're going to see a few more tries scored in this game. Jacques Louis de Toy, right up with the play. He's had a super match as the, the hooker of Afrikaans Wersian School. So a little bit of calmness on uh, the faces of uh, some of the Christchurch men there. There's a little bit more voice coming from the Uffies bench. I can hear them downstairs. Yeah, definitely. And very little voice coming from our cameramen who normally have a little to say as well. You just hear the whoops of delight when uh, they see some exciting action. So the put in, Max Hughes, the what scrum backpedaling. That's a good scrum from Uffies. They managed to stabilize it at Christchurch. I've been really impressed with the way uh, Dylan Avembe has made the game go. It's been a great flowing game. Um, you know, he's a young referee coming up and he's up and coming. He's coming through the ranks. Um, has been at the Craven Week last year at Paul Gym. So, you know, uh, kudos to him and, you know, also learning from the likes of Jonathan Kaplan that is also being refereed, that actually refer refereed the game before this Pride. That's thing. great. Actually great to see too because, you know, in the world today, I'm sure there's a, an overall shortage of referees and like to see more people plying their trade as referees they're such important elements of our game of rugby because rugby has a, a very complicated and extensive law book but of course assistant referees help them the television match officials the tmos help them too Out again from Max Hughes. So at the moment, Christchurch holding on to that ball and just keeping the position going, making things difficult for Afis. Max Hughes wanting a couple of big fellows there for to do the carrying. Now a little bit of pace. This is a very good running here by the Christchurch boys. Good support play from them as well as uh, Thomas Schmack it was who took it in. Good attacking position. This the long pass now. Can they find their way through here somehow? Josh Jennings caught in possession. Still they hold on to it and uh, look the part now. Maybe the team that scores next might well be the winner of this contest. Who knows? Just a little bit of action time to follow. Max Hughes looks for the big fellows to do the carrying up of the ball. It's all about defense right now for Uffies. They know that a try against them now could just seal a victory for Christchurch Boys High School. Lovely play this from the loose head prop. Brilliant play there, Max McClintock. Great continuity by the Christchurch Boys High. Um, so just keep on building pressure. Get the forwards get back into the game, you know, and uh, get all that office defender suck in uh, close to the ruck. Well, they've tried to open up for Finn Britain then. They're just about over the line right now. Can somebody find his way through? Yes, they can. 
And who is it? None other than the hooker, Clayton Peronigi. And there's a hooker sitting alongside me here, commentating with me. He doesn't have a smile on his face because he's a South African, but he appreciates the efforts of the hooker. Any try hooker scores might go down for a try of the season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't say all of them, eh? <laughs> There's, some of them are quite spectacular. And this is a very important one, one's got to say. If nothing else, it's scored at a time with just four minutes left of this match. And this is a crucial conversion too. This could be a conversion to ensure that you don't lose the game. Definitely. To get the seven points ahead. I think uh, four and a half minutes is a long time still left. Can be. And um, with Afis having the win at the back, nothing is impossible. <laughs> Absolutely right. And so you, you would know about that, Mr. Adidas CEO. I don't know. I might have forgotten that. <laughs> No, Ali Lewis makes sure of it, so that's a good effort from them. And uh, there'll be a, a couple of men coming onto the park. I can see uh, Bjorn Graham's on for Afis. Last chance saloon, a last chance to throw the dice for Afis as we see the final efforts there and that try that was scored. And that ball somehow got punched back, was it? Michael Fenasfiak and caught in possession. Oh, something's happened there. That uh, it, I think it was a knock-on, so the referee playing scrum advantage. There isn't one, so they'll come back. Just look at the time being eaten away. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that the scrum is certainly going to eat some time away from the office back and the team. You know, that's now certainly going to be under pressure now to get this, you know, points on the board. Well, they don't have the put-in at the scrum. But can they provide... The go forward to potentially win the ball from the scrum. But I think there's a sense from the men in the darker jerseys that uh, there's a game to be won here and a contribution to the Ryder Cup, which uh, is like in golf. Points that are won for the rest of the world teams and South African teams. Callum Simpson done a good job from the fullback position carrying that up. Been a lot of courage shown by this Christchurch team. Two and a half minutes left. And still playing with a lot of confidence. The Uffies team need to get their hands on the ball. Somehow they've got to get that ball away from Christchurch so they can run at them. There's a huge commitment of players to the breakdown point from both sides. Almost overly so in some ways, but such is the desperation. Caleb Dowie, you took it in there. This is uh, Jack Skips. Oh, he's still unable to get hold of that ball. Scrum off asking for some heavy patrollers there to help carry it and just eat that time. One minute and a bit left of this game. Taken in by Caleb Dowie. Well, penalty it is. Now the opportunity for Afis. There's very little time left. Can they plug it into the corner and find a way over that try line from a line out? This is going to be a very important kick. And it's not out. Danger time, one feels for Christchurch who now are into touch so it'll be a throw in belonging to Afis they want to hurry this up Jock to Troy get it in and bring their backs into action can we see a miracle here where Afis end up drawing this game and out they come now Caught in possession this time is uh, Nico Miller, but it's another penalty.
Up east, good line out, good set. The sack was immediate, so there's nothing wrong with it. And now the long pass. He has a chance now for Afis. They need to score close in if they do score to make sure that there's an opportunity with the conversion. The big men are involved. Janser van Rensburg. They're right on the line now. They've got numbers out wide. Jacques Louis de Toy caught in possession. Still, you've got to show enough patience. There's enough time. Don't lose the ball. Don't knock it on. Keep plugging away for that line. And here they come. Chance of a try. That ball's held up at the moment. Can they get it down? Now is there someone that can carry it over? Yes, there it's is. And again, it's Michael van Asperken. And boy, do you want to be a kicker now? Second try then for Michael van Asperken. A try, a rather a conversion to draw this game at 31 all. There's the finishing touches. You'll see now the scrum off comes into play. There he is. Decides, thinks about going right, looks left, and finds a, a tiniest of holes and manage, manages to just plonk that ball over the line. Dieter Crawford, a euro or zero. What's he going to be? Should go for the far right inside pole with the wind behind his back so the wind can push it in through the poles that's a man who's played a lot of rugby on this field and he's got it over what a finish what a finish up is showing so much character in coming back into this game right at the death they scored those two tries that really got them going absolutely brilliant effort and one of the highlights one feels as well at the world schools festival ramon samuels Stormers Hooker alongside me. Thanks so much for joining us in commentary. And uh, that's your debut. And I think uh, I'll give you a, a fair mark out of 10 when, I, when I'm asked to, how did he go? Thank you. I Thank you very much. I think he went very well, considering as well that Ramon speaks Afrikaans as his home language, but he speaks the King's English when he's in commentary. So thanks for joining us here, Chappie. And good luck with your rehab and everything and when you get back onto the park. Thanks, Gavin. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thanks, Chappie. Thank <laughs> you.